Okay. Yeah. yeah, good evening everyone. So before I start, can anyone please confirm whether my voice is clear, whether my screen is visible or not? Yes, yes, everything is fine. fine. Thank you, fine. Okay. So in the last demo session, just we are discussing like what is big data, why Hadoop required, and Hadoop advantages. Okay, just I was briefing you, it's a big data, huge volumes of data. So data is stored in the form of uh, TBs or petabytes, exabytes, zettabytes, zettabytes, zettabytes from TB onwards, we are going to say it as big data. So like storing this huge data and for processing this huge data, we have got a framework called Hadoop. So it's going to provide two services. One is storage and processing. It stores, it's, it's used for both storage and for processing. And here we see like two types of applications, batch applications, online applications, but Hadoop performs batch processing. Hadoop is for batch applications. Means user interference not required. So it's a uh, millions and trillions of records working with millions and trillions of records. And Hadoop advantages, I can say like unlimited data storage, very high speed processing, can handle all varieties of data. Okay. <clears throat> Hadoop follows master and slave architecture, I said. Hadoop doesn't follow client server architecture. Fine. So before I go with Hadoop advantages, let me say the drawbacks of databases. Why Hadoop doesn't use databases for storing its data? Why uh, databases are not used for storing Hadoop data? So let me just brief you about this uh, drawbacks of databases as compared with Hadoop. <coughs> I'm sorry. Drawbacks of databases. Drawbacks of databases, first one. I'm sorry. Very less storage, very less storage only in GBs or TBs of data. It can store up to in databases, PC, very less storage. It can handle only GBs or okay, otherwise, sir. Less storage. can handle GBs or TBs of data. Next. Most of the databases, in most of the databases, no parallel processing is going to, no parallel processing. Next. If volume increasing, Volume increasing, speed decreases. Volume increasing, speed decreases. So I'm saying like if volume increases, speed decreases. Means let, let me give an example for this. So for, um, let us take a query selector sum of amount, total amount from sales one. Select sum of amount from sales two. Select the total amount from sales three. I'm taking these three queries, observe these three. From sales three. 
sum of amount from sales one amount from sales two sales three. think that sales one consisting of some 100 records sales two consisting of some 1 lakh records sales three consists of 1 crore records now try to answer which query is going to execute faster among these three which query is going to execute among these three among these three queries first sales query. one obviously the first query right total amount from 100 records as compared to 1 lakh or 1 crore records means record to record if data increasing then volume increasing speed decreasing right here a volume increasing speed decreases okay okay next <clears throat> if complexity increases speed decreases i'm saying if complexity increases speed decreases complexity increasing speed decreases i'm saying complexity increasing speed decreasing means for example i'm taking the same query <clears throat> select sum of amount from sales one select sorry, series three queries now now sum of amount from sales one average amount from sales one standard deviation of amount standard deviation of amount from sales one okay think all the records all the same table like sales one think it consisting of one lakh records one lakh records sales one it consisting of one lakh records and this consisting of one lakh records I'm sorry. <clears throat> one lakh, one lakh, one lakh records. All consisting of same table, right? All consisting of same number of records. Okay. Now, which query executes faster among this? Sum of amount of average amount of standard deviation. Yes. Someone, some one, some some executes faster, right? As compared to other, because average amount is a two step process. First, sum to be calculated, next, average to be calculated. Means, as compared as compared to this other two queries, sum of amount executes faster as compared to the remaining. Okay, so see this uh, query to query complexity increasing, speed decreasing. I'm saying next. The major drawback of databases like that. I'm sorry. Databases can handle only structured data. They cannot handle unstructured, semi-structured kind of data, right? I'm sorry. Databases can handle only structured data. can handle only structured data they cannot handle unstructured data unstructured or semi-structured okay for example observe this diagram once For example, I want to take reviews for a particular movie. Okay. I want to take reviews for a particular. This is that table available. User giving review for a particular movie. Okay. Here I am taking, collecting the reviews. User one, 
user two, three hundred users feedback. If the movie is one, they saying good one. If the movie is bad, saying zero. If movie is good one, so they are giving the feedback in the form of ones and zeros. One means good, zero means bad. One is good, zero means bad. And reviews. The table name is reviews. So here, hundred people have given the reviews in the form of zeros and ones. Can you count the number of ones, number of goods, and the number of zeros? Can you count the number of goods and bads? How many people see? How many people saying the movie is good, and how many saying? Can you count? I I mean, using this SQL, can you count the number of ones and zeros? Count aggregation? Yes. Yes. Observe this. Select. Review wise, I want to count single grouping, single aggregation. Review wise, count I want from which table? From reviews table, group by group by review. This is what. So select review wise count from reviews group by review. Okay. What is the output we get from this? Review wise count means review means zeros and ones, right? Count star. 90 people saying the movie is good, 10 people saying the movie is bad, right? 90 people saying the movie good, and 10 people saying the movie is bad. Okay. So, for this kind of structured data, you can write queries and you can work with this. But generally, for example, But if you see like that, <clears throat> users won't give feedback in the form of zeros and ones, right? They will give in their own text format. First person saying movie is good. Second person saying movie is not good. Third person saying movie something. Okay, movie okay, in this manner. Movie is good, movie is not good, third person, fourth person, okay, in this way. Okay. <clears throat> but can you write a SQL query for this? How many people saying it's good? How many people saying it's not good? Previously for zeros and ones, okay, but now even if you by using keyword, particular keyword count, if you are just making a count based on this keyword, it gives wrong computations, right? Even not good has got good, right? Yes, so fine. So this kind of data can't be handled by databases. Only structured data can be handled, unstructured data can't be handled by this database. So despite of these drawbacks, so Hadoop doesn't use databases for storing its data. It's going with a special kind of file system called as Hadoop for distributed file system, HDFS. So I said Hadoop providing two services and uh, mostly Hadoop is used for batch processing and for batch applications, right? For huge data. And uh, if we today, if we discuss like that, uh, if you, if you take the examples of the top 100 e-commerce sites today, Facebook, LinkedIn, Yahoo, Amazon, all this. Okay, they won't use RDBMS or databases. They go for no SQL databases. Okay. If we, if we discuss like a Facebook, it's nearly generating a 3 trillion transactions for every 10 seconds. For every, observe this. If we, if we discuss about this Facebook, it is generating nearly 3 trillion transactions for every 10 seconds. Means per minute, 18 trillion transactions. Per minute, per hour you calculate. So here, databases like Oracle are not used. 
one lakh records are attacking oracle server means it will be hanged out if one lakh records are attacking oracle server so if we discuss like four years ago only facebook was generating nearly 110 tp per day but the total capacity or life lifetime capacity of oracle is maximum 50 tb it can go okay so but for one day facebook was generating nearly 110 tb but total capacity of oracle lifetime capacity of oracle is 50 tb right so it cannot be used for this so transactional load facebook transactional load for this we have got this we go with other things okay that's why i was saying like noisql databases are the next generation databases so hadoop integration with this noisql database we can perform both online processing and batch processing and as i was just briefing you about the online and batch applications what is the difference and just i was discussing about hadoop advantages hadoop advantage, unlimited data storage See, observe this unlimited data storage because of uh, there is a feature in hadoop unlimited data storage because of a feature because of a feature horizontally unlimited scalability horizontally unlimited scalability okay horizontally unlimited yeah i'll come back to that commodity hardware what do you mean unlimited data storage because of horizontally unlimited what do you mean by horizontally unlimited scalability observe this this is what master these are slaves master and slaves master and slaves master and slaves right okay fine slave one slave two how to follow master and slave architecture single master multiple slaves okay this entire thing we call it like a cluster what is that cluster okay cluster what is a cluster group of cpus nothing but we call it as nodes group of cpus nodes connected in a network okay there are two types of nodes master node slave node master node or name node slave node or data node first you need to understand what are that okay everything data stored within the slaves and data processed by the slaves then what is the responsibility of master master node responsibility master node responsibilities okay first observe this diagram so in hadoop data is stored by the slaves data is processed by the slaves in hadoop data is stored in the form of a txt format so this data for example a big data file 
a huge data file like two TBs of data. So if this one TB, one TB, one TB, one TB, fine. This two TB data can't be stored, can't be formed to any of the slips. So in Hadoop, this data is divided into smaller parts. Smaller parts we call it as chunk blocks. Smaller chunks we call them as blocks. Each block is stored across this slave machines. Each blocks are stored across these slaves. Think that some 10 lakh records in this, 10 lakh records in this, 10 lakh records, 10 lakh records in this. So data distributed across the slaves and data processed by multiple slaves parallelly. So distributed storage and parallel processing both you can see here. Distributed storage and parallel processing. Okay. Fine. <clears throat> so both advantages you are going to achieve distributed storage and parallel processing. So if the data is stored by the slaves, data is processed by the slaves, what that master node does? This we call it as master node. These are slave nodes. Absolutely. Master node responsibilities. First one, task assignment. Load balancing. Once again, can anyone please confirm whether my voice is clear or not? Yes, sir, it's clear. Fine. load balance task assignment load balancing fault tolerance and health monitoring these are the master node responsibilities observe this is fine If you observe this task assignment, I said, so who is going to assign the task to the slaves master? T1 task to slave one, T2 task to slave two, T3 task to slave three, T4 task to slave four. What is T1 task? What is T1 task executing this 10 lakh records? Nothing but a T1 task assigned to slave one. T2 task is nothing but executing the 10 lakh records stored in slave two. T3 task executing this 10 lakh records of slave three means who is assigning the tasks to the slaves master should assign the tasks who are going to execute the tasks slaves get okay. that load balancing load balancing means that for example equal number of tasks will be given to each and every slaves means uh, not a burdening a particular slave okay if particular slave executing uh, uh, three different tasks and a one particular slave executing only one task. So if any new task comes, we need to provide that task to the slave, which is more free. Fault tolerance mechanism. Fault tolerance mechanism, nothing but when multiple ta multiple tasks are executed by multiple slaves. See this multiple task executed by multiple slaves parallelly. Think that 30 tasks executed by 30 slaves parallelly. Suddenly, if any slave goes down as they are machines, Suddenly, if any machine goes down, then the task of that machine need to be reassigned to any of the available machine. This process we call as fault tolerance mechanism and is handled by the master node. When multiple tasks executed by multiple slaves, suddenly if any slave goes down, the task of that slave need to be assigned to any of the available slaves. This process we call as fault tolerance. Okay. Uh, next is like health monitoring. Health monitoring means before assigning the tasks, so master node will have that uh, entire information about each and every slave node. So before assigning the task, so the health monitoring, so which slaves are good, which slaves are healthy, 
so tasks need to be assigned to which slaves everything will be decided by the master node okay master node responsibilities <clears throat> slave node responsibilities is for next observe slave node responsibilities storing data and second is for processing data storing data and processing data fine okay so based on this let us come back to this hadoop advantages horizontally unlimited scalability means horizontally unlimited number of slaves can be added today for example if you are running a business with the 10 slaves think that your business has increased your data has increased your customers are increased but still you cannot go with the same number of slaves right we need to increase the number of slaves as data increases by 100 times customer increases by 1000 times we cannot go with the same number of slaves so we horizontally we should can keep on increasing the slaves there is no limit on the number of slaves supported by Hadoop we can keep on adding keep on adding we say like a commissioning and decommissioning adding and removing okay. because of this horizontally unlimited scalability okay very high speed processing because of what parallel processing very high speed processing because of parallel processing okay we discuss about parallel processing and non-parallel processing observe okay observe Parallel processing and non parallel processing. Okay. First, let me discuss about non parallel and parallel. Yes. Non parallel and parallel. For example, one person preparing one item, taking one minute. One person preparing one item, taking one minute. Same one person preparing 10 items, it takes 10 minutes. One person preparing 100 items, taking 100 minutes, right? One person preparing 1000, 1000 items, takes 1000 minutes, it means Okay, but in the case of parallel processing, one item, one minute, 10 items, one minute, 100 items also takes one minute, 1000 items also taking. Means 10 persons preparing 10 items parallelly taking one minute, 100 persons preparing 100 items taking one minute, 1000 persons preparing 1000 items taking one minute. Means here person size it, but in our terminology, we say it as systems. So here, once again, I say, so how master and slave what do you mean by master and slave master systems they are computers cpus okay they are connected in a network master system and slaves slaves are the cpus plus group of group of cpus connected in a network we say as nodes cpus we call it as nodes master node slave nodes group of computers connected in a network we have got one master and all the remaining will be slaves okay unlimited data storage and very high speed processing because of parallel processing okay. because of parallel processing hadoop is going to achieve very high speed can handle all varieties of data can handle all varieties of data structured unstructured and semi-structured
structured semi structured and unstructured unstructured okay fine once again can you please confirm whether my voice is clear is it in a very low voice no sir it's fine fine yeah sayed rahman that is from your side you need to check from your end so everyone the remaining saying like it's fine okay okay <clears throat> okay uh can handle all varieties of data structured semi structured and stru open source python is a open source no licensing required yeah observe here in python sorry in hadoop data is stored in the form of files i'm saying data is stored in the form of files different kinds of file formats are there we'll be discussing that later but most of the time data is in in databases data is stored in the form of tables in hadoop data is stored in the form of files dot dot txt files okay assume that in the form of files the files have got some it's going to occupy some space okay that that file is divided into blocks okay fine open source no licensing required so most of this hadoop components are from apache most of the hadoop products are apache products so we can go to apache mirrors website and we can download the various hadoop products and perform and the other advantages is that commodity hardware means uh, it doesn't mean that hadoop follows a master and slaves multiple slaves like it doesn't mean that we need to have very high end configured systems even normal configured systems also fine it doesn't mean that all the slaves or all the systems should have the same hardware configuration not like other systems or the slaves can go with a different configurations not that highly configured hadoop can work with any any configuration and here to illustrate or to just add points to this unlimited data storage in very high speed processing okay for unlimited data storage and for very high speed processing i can just give you some examples how hadoop has proven in the market storage point of view and processing point of view so to add this so just uh, i have got some query here why databases like oracle cannot store huge data why databases like oracle cannot store huge data databases like oracle cannot store huge data why only hadoop can store okay see if you take the databases like uh, oracle there is a limit there is a limit on the number of even if you go in that real time like uh, even databases also can go with multiple slaves databases and maximum limit on number of slaves max limit number of slaves so databases and max limit on number of slaves for example observe oracle database oracle database can go max of 256 slaves 256 slaves it can mysql mysql can go with max of 54 slaves Oracle 256 slaves, MySQL 54 slaves, and we discuss like MySQL Express. 
by s pure can go with max of 256 lakhs db2 can go with 256 lakhs cpus sql server can go with 256 lakhs so if you take any of these databases they are going with maximum 256 lakhs means they are used for oltp online transactional processing maximum of 256 lakhs but none of these databases storing unlimited data they can they are going with maximum 256 lakhs but I think that even 256 lakhs i cannot say it's a huge or big storage Oracle, even if it is using 256 levels, that means 256 no. gets filled, the performance of the system gets degraded, right? For example, just like a labor example, in, if you have got a mobile phone, 64, 64 GB storage is given. All the 64 GB, if you are trying to fill, then the performance of the phone degrades, right? It takes, it works very slowly. The same way here also, if 256 levels gets filled, the system performance degrades even it won't even start for some time and if i discuss about this specialized databases like teradata it can go with 512 cpus or 512 slaves netija it's a, another Specialized database used for data warehouse purpose. It also give, can go with 5 to 12 slaves. Vertica can go with 5 to 12 slaves. Okay. But currently, Teradata and Netija, they are going with 1024 slaves. Hello, sir. Yeah, can you hear my voice now? Can anyone please confirm once again whether my voice yes, is sir. clear now? Yes, sir. Okay. So here if you take example of any databases or specialized databases, they can go up to some extent, but they cannot provide unlimited data storage. But Hadoop, there is no limit on the number of slaves that Hadoop can go. It can go with unlimited number of slaves, unlimited scalability horizontally unlimited scalability horizontally unlimited number of slaves can be added there is no limit of there is no limit on the number of slaves then hadoop can so uh, yahoo when first time implemented hadoop it went with 4000 slaves for storing its data 
and currently Yahoo going with 12,000 slaves for storing its data. Okay, Facebook. When first time implemented Hadoop, it went with 8,000 slaves for storing its data. Currently, Facebook going with 42,000 slaves or 42,000 CPUs. 42,000 slaves used okay, for storing its data. 42,000 slaves are used for storing its data. <clears throat> okay. So that is Hadoop is proven in the market as compared with the other databases. It's proven in the market like huge storage or unlimited data storage. Hadoop is performing. Okay. If I take example of processing point of view, even many tests are conducted. Okay. Yahoo has conducted a test. Yahoo has conducted a test. Okay. It has taken a table of size. 100 TB consisting of 1024 columns. The task is sorting based on 16. The task is sorting. Based on 16 columns. Okay, sorting based on 16 columns. So what is the time taken by different databases? Time taken by different databases. I'm sorry. Oracle. It has taken nearly 3.5 days for processing it. It, it has taken nearly 3.5 days to process it. MySQL. It has taken nearly six days. Oracle taken 3.5, MySQL taken six days. And uh, if we take Teradata, a specialized database used for data warehouse, it has just taken 4.5 hours for processing it. Netija has just taken three hours. And finally, like Hadoop, it has just taken 3.4 minutes to process it. It has just taken only 3.4 minutes to process this data. The latest version of Hadoop has just taken only 1.2 minutes to process this. So that is what Hadoop is proven in the market processing point of view also as compared with other things so hadoop can store unlimited data storage and it has got a very high speed as compared with the other databases so that's why if you see a lot of projects are getting migrated towards hadoop environment wherever we see like etl kinds of projects wherever we see like huge data involved the projects getting migrated towards hadoop so this is what motivation towards Hadoop, like uh, yeah, huge data storage and high speed data processing. So just I was discussing the so Hadoop versions current and old. Yes, if I discuss about Hadoop versions, Hadoop 1.x version. Hadoop 2.x, Hadoop 0.x version, 1.x, 2.x, the latest, very latest we have got Hadoop 3.x version also available. Okay. So here from Hadoop 0 a version and 1 version, we have got some little drawbacks, all got rectified from the Hadoop 2 versions. 
how to watch non words with politics yarn y a r n yet another resource negotiator yet another resource negotiator okay okay so these are the hadoop versions okay i was just uh, briefing you about these advantages open source commodity hardware no licensing required can handle all varieties very high speed processor and limited data storage right okay we'll be going with both 2.x and 3.x yes 3.x <clears throat> So this is what a cluster group of nodes connected in network, master node responsibility, slave node responsibilities. Okay. Hadoop advantages, why databases cannot store unlimited data and storage point of view, processing point of view, Hadoop is proven in the market. Okay. So what I'm going to discuss as part of this course. So Hadoop, Hadoop components. Hadoop ecosystem components. So for storing and processing data, we have got many components in Hadoop. So first one, HDFS, Hadoop distributed file system. Hadoop distributed file system this for storage it's meant for storage and uh, map reduce it's for processing it's a processing component apache peak is also meant for processing so we have got a component called pig latin language we use a language called pig latin language it's a simple scripting language it's a simple scripting language where we can perform a bigger operations with this very small coding so see like 100 lines of java code of approximately like within six lines in pig that is what the easiness of pig and pig latin language it is also meant for processing and we have got apache high Hive is also a, a processing component. It is also meant for processing. It's a kind of data warehouse kind of environment is in the Hadoop framework, DWH. Okay. Here we use a language called HQL, Hive query language, similar to SQL language. So we use a language called Hive query language, which is similar to SQL language, the kind of data warehouse kind of environment. Next, we use a, one more component that we discussed like scoop. Scoop, nothing but yes, SQL plus Hadoop. First two characters of SQL and last three characters of this scoop, nothing but scoop. It's meant for import or export operations. Import or export operations. for importing data from different databases to Hadoop and exporting data from Hadoop to databases. And no, YARN. So what are the architectural changes we see and what are the new things implemented from Hadoop to onwards? We call it as a yet another resource negotiator. negotiator yet another resource negotiator 
yes no sql not no no sql not only sql not only sql so for schema less behavior for random access schema less behavior and for random access so not only sql schema less behavior and for random we go for no sql so we are going to discuss one no sql database like hbase hbase is a kind of no sql databases which works only for hadoop which works only for hadoop environment it's not for but we have got no sql databases like hbase cassandra mongodb couchdb react finet many no sql databases we have got uh, types of no sqls like uh, key value store document store graph store <coughs> key value store so with that we use we go we are going with hbase is the it's especially designed for hadoop environment it, but if you take uh, cassandra mongodb it's for open applications for any environment fine apart from this i am just going to discuss uh, uh, a streaming component like flume capturing live streaming data capturing live streaming data what do you mean by streaming data what do you mean by streaming data a continuous example, flow of data like share market of yeah continuous flow of data the data which keeps on incrementing data which keeps on generating such kind of data we call it as streaming data that that kind of data also how to capture and how we can just load into this hdfs and later we are going to process the data using processing components and also like kafka it also has got a great boom in today's market kafka very high speed uh, sorry uh, kafka is for advanced advanced streaming advanced streaming and messaging it's for streaming and messaging okay next like zookeeper zookeeper the name itself saying that so it controls and coordinates all the other hadoop components controls and coordinates all the other components all the other components okay and spark spark and so spark is a execution model it's implemented by using a language called scala or python or java mostly used like scala and python okay spark in memory computation we say like in memory computation so where data is stored data is going to be stored within the memory level data is processed within the memory level data stored in the ram data processed within the ram very high speed processing we can see in spark so in spark like we are going to see like spark core programming spark sql and spark streaming micro batching we say okay so these are the components that what i am going to discuss as part of this course so in brief uh, so that storage and processing comments hdfs snap reduce pick high scoop yarn no sql hbase bloom kafka zookeeper and spark on right yeah anubam das yes any query sir if we install hadoop uh, most of the components are until hbase will be automatically installed or we need to install all each and every component 
no 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 if you install one second okay one second mm. okay if you install hadoop you will get the first two components only hadoop and MapReduce, hdfs and MapReduce only remaining all the components we need to configure one by one you are not going to get all this we need to configure one by one with the highest group beyond you know, scale express all right you're not going to get all this this all you can see in apache okay. mirrors webs you can download even to configure it into this but uh, there is cloud era distributions are there where you can see all as the inbuilt within them directly we can ready for use okay. cloud era distributions cdh okay mm, yes so we this need to register that, uh, for it or uh, we need to pay for it sir? no no we can just download it's available okay. download is available it will be like 6 gb 6 to uh, not 8 gb it will be we need to download 8 gb fine so how do okay introduction what is with data hdfs map reduce that is what i'm going to discuss like scoop for importing and exporting from different data sources yon apache pig in brief apache relational operators and diagnostic operators and eval functions hive and uh, no sql databases hbase and scala before i go with spark scala language scala data types scala variables scala expressions scala functions scala collections control structures transformations for scala before I go with Spark, Spark and compare with different other technologies, RTD computations, computations in Spark, persistence options, Spark core computing, its groupings and aggregations, various actions and transformations, one by one in brief, Spark SQL, what are the case classes, and SQL context, data frame APS, data sets, working with SQL statements, deployment modes, local and cluster mode, Spark application stages and tasks, driver and executor, and Spark out to submit Spark jobs. And within the Eclipse ID and within this IntelliJ ID, and using build tools like the SBT build tool, Maven build tool, and, and, and also knowledge on Spark and Cassandra. Right? And also like integration of Spark with the Hive, Spark with MySQL. This is what. No, 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 number can't no. be provided. Let's talk with front office. So, if you want any other personal queries, what you can just talk with the front office when they call, they can arrange a conference call with me. Sir, actually, uh, I'm new to this technology, so yes. I'm I'm beginner. Yes. I work on system admin. So, yes. after whatever the uh, courses you are i mean whatever the concept you are trying to pass us is this finish uh, i mean is this enough to become a, to uh, get expert on big data yeah nearly i'm discussing 100 hours for this course completion i'm taking okay. 100, hours, 100 hours means nearly so like nearly like 45 to 50 hours per hadoop and spark we are takes 50 hours in brief in depth we are going to discuss i'm going to give like a Four years experience knowledge is going to gain the same kind of experience people will be having everything okay hadoop and uh, spark if we learn these two is that enough or any additional things we, we need to it's learn? enough it's, it's enough. enough okay okay we can start the projects and we can work on that previously only hadoop was enough but even uh, spark is asked okay, okay. spark okay. is a very nice process even now current spark was okay right so more on this are any group is created for uh, sharing the information how you will be sharing the data and all to us sir yeah yeah uh, group will be created and also like uh, uh, clear notes whatever the topic wise that practical notes everything i'll be sharing to your mail ids you'll be getting that notes to mail ids if any some bigger data or bigger things will be shared to your google drives and uh, uh, every day, okay. 
every day is a, it's a session here gets recorded right it's a uh, every session is going to get recorded even uh, you'll be getting the video copy of it every day session day session by session you'll be. so can we use these videos okay. uh, uh, any time or any limited time we will be having access uh, uh, i think six months to six months next six months to one year okay after that it will get locked i mean it will get expired we can't use yeah. that video right yes one year even one we year. can't download in our local system right no you cannot download you can just for next one year you can just view that fine okay so every session is video recorded you can oh. make the notes it anyhow you'll be having clear notes and will provide topic yes, sir can you share the syllabus please yeah yeah you yeah, you'll be getting uh, uh uh, just you can give a mail to the Durga soft they'll be providing you i think they have mailed you yesterday i think any mails if you are getting i will ask you to no we them. don't we didn't, i didn't receive any emails i yeah, already I, requested I, them so if you have given that mail id i'll just be giving the mail id right so that mail id it is going to be forwarded i'll ask them to forward to all your mail ids whenever you are getting registered before you start the meeting that i'll be you'll be provided the Syllabus topic, syllabus content. Today you will be getting the syllabus content. Everyone will be getting the syllabus content. You can go through all those. Even you can see the depth of the uh, topics that we are covering as compared to other trainings. We'll be going with more hours, more number of examples, more number of uh, tasks, real time tasks. We'll be discussing. Okay, fine. And uh, here mainly consultation. So, oh, sir, we will be starting from uh, Monday or uh, from tomorrow. It will be started, sir. Tomorrow Friday, right? Tomorrow, just I'll be giving briefing how exactly data student processed. This topic, but tomorrow also you can attend like uh, some basic concepts I am going to cover. It's not like any duplication or replication today's topic. It will be like continuation for the today's topic, and con the same thing will be continued on Monday. Fine. Okay. It will be anyhow. Even I don't. Uh, yeah, I did you get the videos of yesterday's session? Can you please confirm? No, no, I didn't get it. Okay, you'll be getting that. They'll be sharing you the videos today or tomorrow. Okay, you'll be getting the videos. I think, mm -hmm. yeah, still any queries? No, yes, sir. Uh, are we going to come up? Yes, sir. I have a query, sir. Yes, go ahead. Hello, yeah. Yeah, are we going to come across with the ETL process in this any uh, anywhere in this application, sir? I mean, ETL process. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Extracting, transforming, and loading. Total everything we are dealing with those kinds of things. Exactly. How we are pulling the data from? I mean, in sources. which application? So one second. Yeah. Okay. So we are we are going to pull the data from different OLTPs, well, different databases, and you are just going to bring into one place like a hadoop hdfs later on we are going to process it based on the business logic later then we are just going to generate reports and thus and we are going to perform some kind of analysis later if possible you can just apply some ml techniques on that right. okay i mean i mean may i know on which uh, which i mean application we use for that in this all these applications are so like uh, it's spark okay so Spark we are using in uh, a pig. Okay. I mostly I mostly we are work to deal with those things. We have got different types of tables, partitioning, bucketing, indexing. A lot of things can be done. Yeah. Okay, sir. I, I just want to make sure all that will be covered also in these topics. Yes, yes. Yeah, thank you, sir. Uh, how many sessions will it will take to complete? Pardon? how many sessions it will take to complete the whole subject how many session it will take to complete oh. whole syllabus yeah yeah how many sessions means i said like 90 to 100 hours 100 hours so if i get some bigger sessions i can complete a little bit faster but it goes like three months two and a half to three months right okay so. in brief why because in brief You'll be learning everything, not in a hurry, hurry, like not in an overview with multiple examples. You'll be getting great command once you complete the course. You can just uh, defend the interviews also. Any interview, you can crack it with that knowledge. So, do we use what is the do we require Impala? 
Impala previously, uh, high we are using, right? High is enough. We are going okay. with high. High and Impala both are used, but uh, uh, any one you prefer, but high is mostly used. Okay, and okay, high. Uh, okay, any Highway program, Highway. what kind of programming language we use? Any so programming language like Java, Python? Scala no, in language. our course. In our course. Scala language. Scala language in brief, we are going to learn Scala. And for Pig Pig Latin language, we use. For HQL high query language, we are going to use study. And uh, for Spark Scala language, for Pig Pig Latin, and for high HQL language, we are going to use these things. Oh, sir, for MapReduce, sir. So map map is actually map is previously highly it was used but now it got outdated but uh, we used okay. to use java for java programming was used uh, but still i'll give that knowledge on that but currently it is outdated not used in the industry currently you can okay. just check it uh instead okay. of map this we have with park and scalar right but i'll be just giving yeah. the target everything about those and even i can just show you the execution process also here yeah. So, if any questions or concerns on the session, only next day we can ask, or uh, in the group uh, we'll be yeah. we can ask. Yeah, yeah. One second. So, related to the queries uh, at the start of the session, you can ask. At the end of the session, you can ask. Um, even if you got any queries uh, when you are you are practicing, right? So, even you can just post that query. If you got any error, you can just take the snap of that, and you can just post it in the group also. The group means WhatsApp group you mean to say, right? Yeah, WhatsApp group. Okay. So if okay. anyone if got any error, you can take the snap of the terror and keep anybody can answer. But if I, I will be answering it. Right. Sir, what about the live projects? Uh, you are not going to provide any projects, right? So I'll be just going to provide you the entire flow, project flow. How this flow is going to happen within this sort of environment and all. So we can practice by taking some examples, I guess. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, thank yeah. you. Sir. Yeah, group will be created once everyone gets registered. A WhatsApp group will be created for the interactions, for any timings, for any other materials you want. If interaction with the students, like any materials, if you are otherwise for any timings change or any other things, you can interact with that group. For technical interaction, group will be there, yes. Okay, and I hope there will be a certificate after the end of this uh, course. Sir. Yes, yes, will be given by this uh, Durga soft. Okay, does so, the Durga soft helps to finish our certification? Yeah, yeah, even if anyone going for the certification of this, I'll be taking some separate session of this uh, certification and what are the queries, what are the how your performance is measured within that. Okay, how much they will charge for certification in India? Uh, no, no, that you need to take care by yourself only, but the training point of view we are discussing. Okay, so okay, any, okay. Anyhow, we are discussing like more number of hours, right? 100 hmm. hours, so in brief, we will be discussing all the concepts. What the certification name will be, sir? CCA 75. So I'll just I'll just give you the knowledge on that certification. Okay, I'll take it up. And what the designation will get after learning this? If we if you are trying to search for job, or the designation we can find it. Hadoop certified developer. That means Hadoop we will be becoming a developer. Hadoop certified Hadoop certified developer. Yes. No, if we don't do the certification, then we'll get directly Hadoop. No, no, no. Just you are. It is certified. You are certified developer uh, but uh, certification is they are certifying you by keeping the test right okay no no after we do the certification we'll get hadoop certified developer yes, even yes. if we don't do the certification also we'll get the same designation no 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 uh, means designation given by whom if, but if, doing... if any organization if you I mean, might if be you like data start... engineer uh... No, if you want yeah. to search for job in Indeed, for example, exactly. what kind of designation we can search? You are not what kind of keywords? You are just a developer. You are not a certified. You are not a certified one. You are just a Hadoop developer. Okay, okay. will be a developer. Yes. Big data developer. 
you are just a hadoop developer you are not a hadoop certified developer. okay hadoop developer okay okay the keyword we can search as hadoop developer or hadoop like that yes okay, okay. thank you so so daily we will go with the same timing 4 to 5 so as of today so if there are no other queries just i'll just sign off for today meet you tomorrow at same time with the same link so still if you have got any other queries you can ask me in the tomorrow session also fine okay, okay. thank you sir okay thank you all for okay. your time thank you sir okay.